These ruby red fruits, known as cornelian cherries, are relatively unknown in the U.S., despite being an incredibly hardy addition to the garden or food forest. Today we're going to learn how to grow cornelian cherries from seed. First, let's take a look at some nice varieties I found in a nearby arboretum. Many of the common ornamental cornelian cherries will look like this one, with relatively round, dark red berries. Most will make decent enough fruit, but some can be a little less palatable compared to the nice varieties. This one in particular is called redstone. This next one with long slender fruits is the Ukrainian cultivar Elegant. In this location, it seems like it's already ripened a good deal of fruit, and these are the last of them. There's not too much to say about this one, which is the aptly named variety Yellow. Now we'll just have to wait five or so years to see if any of its seedlings will produce yellow fruit too. This final variety is Pioneer, also known by the Ukrainian name Lukyanovsky. This plant is high yielding and makes pretty large fruits. They ripen a good deal later than the other varieties here too. Taking a look back, this plant is kind of ridiculously productive. It's pretty cool to see a small tree or a large shrub to be this loaded with fruit. With a little TLC, hopefully some of my seedlings will look half as nice as this. While the nice red fruits hanging on the plants may look good, they can still be a bit astringent, especially if they have any bits of lighter colors in there. The best fruits for eating fresh should be a little bit softer and will have a slightly darker purplish hue. Except for the yellow varieties, those ones look just a bit more translucent and squishier. If you end up picking some slightly underripe fruits, they'll still ripen if left on the counter for a few days. The next step is to extract the seeds. This can be done using a food mill or by the mouth. If you pick up gushy fruits or let some overripen, you can just clean them off using a colander. Once you have your clean seed, it's time for the long stratification process. To avoid seed predation and to keep things tidy, I use takeout containers or sandwich bags with slightly damp potting mix. Drop them in, shake it up, and you're ready to go. I labeled each of mine even though I'll probably end up losing track of them later. Next you're going to want to find a warm, room temperature spot to set these seeds for about three months. The warm, moist conditions will help microbes start breaking down the tough seed coat, as well as satisfy a dormancy requirement. After three months are up, you can move the seeds into the fridge for another three to four months or more. After stratification, they can be moved into a warm place and carefully monitored for germination in the bags. You can then pick out each little seedling one by one and pot them up. In the first year, some seeds should start to germinate, though likely not all of them will. Continue stratification with any unsprouted seeds, and even more should come up in the next year. If you take care of your little seeds, you should end up with something like this by the end of the season. I grew these ones in partial shade and just let them do their thing all year. You could probably end up with foot-tall saplings in one year if you took good care of them. Next year, they'll get spaced out in a garden bed or individual pots to grow for one more year before I set them in their final growing places. Hopefully this video helped some people, and I wish you luck germinating some cornelian cherries of your own. They're not too tough, but they take some time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.